Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. Today's topic is alveolar bone. So alveolar bone is one of the component of periodontium. So periodontium consists of two soft tissues and two hard tissues. So gingiva and periodontal ligament are the soft tissues, whereas the cementum and alveolar bone are the hard tissues. So we finished gingiva, periodontal ligament, cementum. Now we are moving on to alveolar bone. So I hope you understood all the three concepts, gingiva, cementum and periodontal ligament. So understanding periodontium and its component requires a thorough knowledge of tooth formation and its stages. So bud stage, cap stage, bell stage, a thorough knowledge would help you to understand all the other chapters and other concepts so easily. If you have a proper uh, knowledge about the basic concepts, it will be very difficult for you to understand the further topics because all are interconnected because the tooth form formation happens all together. Enamel, dentine, pulp, root, periodontal ligament, cement and gingiva. So all are forming as a unit. So you just cannot skip one unit and learn the other units so you have to learn everything all together for that you need to have a very good knowledge about the beginning of tooth bud bell and cap stages and all the layers and the other components so it will be very easy to understand all the remaining topics in oral cavity so let's see the details of alveolar bone so this session is about its composition, its classification and development. Alveolar bone is by definition it is a part of or the portion of maxilla and mandible that forms and supports the tooth socket. So entire maxilla and mandible we need to think about a portion which supports and forms the tooth socket which supports the tooth roots or tooth so that a smaller part or comparatively smaller part of maxilla and mandible that supports the root is alveolar bone so it has a role in rapid remodeling like uh, during the tooth eruption and functional demands it continuously remodeled and it acts as an attachment apparatus for cementum and periodontal membranes and alveolar bone. So it has got uh, various functions. Uh, functions it provides attachment to the periodontal ligament. It uh, absorbs the occlusal pressure. It gives attachment to muscles. It provides framework for the marrow. It is a reservoir for ions especially calcium and it uh, houses the roots of tooth which is achieved by the insertion of Sharpie's fibers into alveolar bone proper. So there are various functions. Now we are seeing about the composition of alveolar bone. So alveolar bone is composed of inorganic and organic matter and two-thirds of uh, total is inorganic matter and the remaining one third is organic matter okay so inorganic matter includes hydroxyapatite crystals and minerals such as calcium phosphorus carbonate citrate hydroxyl ions magnesium sodium potassium fluoride in very smaller quantity whereas in organic matter it consists of both collagen and non-collagenous proteins percentage is non-collagenous proteins such as osteocalcin, osteonectin, protein, phosphoproteins and proteoglycans. So that's about uh, composition of alveolar bone. And now we move on to the most critical part that is development. Okay. So alveolar process consists of bone which is formed both by cells from dental follicle that is alveolar bone proper and cells which are independent of tooth development. That is branchial or mandibular arch because maxilla and mandible develops from first brachial arch or which is also known as mandibular arch the maxilla forms within the maxillary process and mandible forms within the fused mandibular process of mandibular arch 
and both jaw bones start as small centers of intramembranous ossification around stomodium. So it is formed both by cells from the dental follicle. From dental follicle, what forms? Alveolar bone proper and maxilla and mandible forms from the cells which is independent of tooth development that is first brachial or mandibular arch. Now let's see step by step process of alveolar bone formation. First what happens? Maxilla and mandible develops intramembranously and at 8th week of utero, utero what happens? Alveolar process develops from the dental follicle during tooth eruption. Okay, so maxilla and mandible already is forming intramembranously and around 8th week in utero what happens? The alveolar process develops from dental follicle. Okay, this is intramembranous development and dental follicle give rise to alveolar process. That happens during the tooth eruption. Okay, so next in bell stage, the developing bone becomes closely related and the size of alveolus is dependent on the size of the growing tooth germ. So it is always closely related. The size of tooth germ and the alveolar bone an alveolar bone it develops in a resorption deposition fashion it resorbs at the inner wall and it gets deposited on the outer wall so it grows so these developing teeth which lie in a trough of bone which is known as tooth crypt so after that what happens these teeth which separated from each other by the development of interdental septa. So interdental septa forms and these teeth are separated. And then with the onset of root formation, the interradicular bone develops in multi rooted teeth. So we have seen interdental septum, then there will be interradicular bone formation as the root formation happens between the two roots of multi rooted teeth. So whereas in case of deciduous teeth, when a deciduous tooth sheds, its alveolar bone is automatically resorbs. So after that, uh, the alveolar process gradually getting incorporated into maxilla or mandibular body. Though it has separate origin, finally it be, it be a one single bone. So permanent tooth moves into place developing its own alveolar bone from its own follicle. Okay, so the dental follicle gives rise to periodontal ligament, cementum and alveolar bone. So that's about development. So maxilla mandible forms through intramembranous ossification in 8th week of utero. The alveolar process develops from dental follicle and it becomes closely related in bell stage. So it depends on the tooth germ size and resorption happens in a wall, deposition on outer wall and it grows and these tooth lie in a trough of bone which is known as tooth crypt and these tooth separated by interdental septum and interradicular bone which separates the different roots of multi rooted tooth and the deciduous tooth alveolar bone automatically resorbs and it slowly getting incorporated into the body of maxilla and mandible and will be a single bone. Now let's move on to the classification. We have many classification in alveolar bone. The one is based on the functional adaptation. So according to functional adaptation, it can be classified as alveolar bone proper and supporting alveolar bone. So alveolar bone proper is just adjacent to the tooth root and the remaining part is supporting alveolar bone. And another classification is based on the histological characteristics. It can be divided into mature and immature bone. Mature again into compact bone and cancellous bone. Immature is woven bone. This is very important histological classification. Mature and immature. Mature into compact and cancellous bone. And immature into woven bone. Compact means it is very densely compacted. Cancellous is not very densely compacted. Woven is an immature bone. And uh, ultimately we can uh, classify it is based on the gross morphology. So gross morphology we have basically only two types. One is basal bone and alveolar process. So alveolar process again it will be 
classified as alveolar bone proper inner and uh, sorry inner and outer cortical plates trabecular bone interdental septum and interradicular septum okay so alveolar bone proper inner and outer cortical plates trabecular bone inter uh, dental septum and interradicular septum the alveolar bone proper which is again divided into bundle bone and lamellar bone this is based on the gross morphology this is based on the histology this is functional adaptation okay so let's see one by one so first one is alveolar bone proper so alveolar bone proper is a thin layer of combat bone so before that we need to study what is combat bone and what is cancellous bone and this this is the alveolar bone this part up to the root tip arbitrarily we can say that it is alveolar process and the remaining bone is a basal bone okay so up to the root tip it is an arbitrary point alveolar process and basal bone so when we take a longitudinal section we get two layers of bone the outer combat bone which is in pink color and the inner cancellous or spongy bone okay now we'll start with alveolar bone proper so alveolar bone proper is a thin layer of combat bone okay so this is a combat bone the pink shaded and this black inner covering of the combat bone is known as alveolar bone proper so it is continuous with the cortical plates and it forms the tooth socket okay so it forms the tooth socket so it is continuous with cortical plates and it forms a tooth socket okay so it will be like this so that is alveolar bone proper it surrounds the root of the teeth and gives attachment to the principal fibers of periodontal ligament so there will be principal fibers of periodontal ligament attached to the inner layer of cortical bone various uh, vascular canals and it is a double fibrillar orientation so this is very important in radiography because cribriform plate is anatomical landmark and lamina dura which we seen in radiograph which is covering the root is a radiographical term and we also call it as bundle bone okay so bundle bone is a part of alveolar bone proper and it has lamellar portion also so it is known as cribriform plate lamina dura bundle bone and alveolar bone proper lamina dura is a radiographic term cribriform plate is anatomical term and bundle bone is a morphological and alveolar bone also a morphological term so it is around the teeth actually now we have inner and outer cortical plates so alveolar process is continuous with the basal bone of maxilla and mandible so this is the basal bone okay so alveolar process is continuous with the basal bone so arbitrarily as i mentioned the root tip root tip keeps the alveolar process away from basal bone but it is a continuous we can keep a arbitrary point and we can divide the entire one into alveolar process and basal bone an alveolar bone proper is known as bundle bone as numerous bundles of sharpies fibers pass into it from the periodontal ligament okay so that is why it is known as bundle bone lamina dura is because of its appearance it is a radio opaque area and cribriform plate because it has numerous sieve like appearance the vascular channels so the alveolar bone proper has bundle bone lamina dura and cribriform plate synonyms so it appears as a radio opaque or white line radiograph which breaks in continuity 
and if it is break in continuity of lamina dura at proximal aspect of crest of interdental septum this is the interdental septum and at the crest of interdental septum if the breakage is of lamina dura is visible then it is considered as the earliest radiographic change in periodontitis so if the interdental septum if the covering that is the lamina dura is not continuous then we can say that that part of bone is uh, associated with some of the um, inflammatory process and which is indicating of periodontal disease at the earlier stage now we'll see the cancellous bone okay cancellous bone is also known as spongy bone which is anatomic name trabecular bone which is a radiographic name and cancellous bone is a histological name okay so spongy bone cancellous bone and trabecular bone are same cribriform plate lamina dura bundle bone and alveolar bone are same so spongy bone or cancellous bone or trabecular bone which is the presence of trabeculae enclosing irregular marrow spaces lined with a layer of thin flattened endosteal cells this matrix consists of irregularly arranged lamellae separated by incremental and resorption lines so this is a lamellar part okay so the alveolar bone proper has bundle bone and lamellar bone so matrix consists of mm, irregular arranged lamellae and it is got basically two types type 1 and type 2 type 1 the interdental and interradicular trabeculae are regular and horizontal in a ladder like arrangement whereas a type 2 shows irregular arranged delicate interdental and interradicular pattern so interdental septa or interdental bone is between the roots of two teeth whereas interradicular is between the roots of multi rooted teeth okay this is interdental between the teeth this is interradicular between the roots so the cortical bone and spongy bone so this is the cortical bone which is compact bone and the spongy bone inside okay so cortical bone is another name of compact bone so cortical bone is around 85 percentage the spongy bone is 15 percentage cortical bone is um, bone is having less turnover than spongy this is having high turnover and remodeling is around three percentage in cortical or compact bone and this is remodel at 25 percentage and spongy bone is mainly of metabolic function this is of mechanical and protective role so the layer of compact bone or cortical plate is known as alveolar bone okay and then inside this is spongy bone this is alveolar process and this part is basal bone now we have interdental septum interdental septum is a bony partition that separates the adjacent alveoli coronally septa is thin and consists of only fused inner cortical plates the coronal it will be thin and mesiodistal angulation of mesiodistal angulation uh, of interdental septum is parallel to the line drawn between cej and approximating teeth and if interdental septum is narrow the septum may consist only cribriform plate if the roots are too close together an irregular window can appear in the bone between the adjacent tooth so it is a alveolar bone which is present between the teeth that is interdental septum and the shape of interdental bone is a function of tooth form and embrasure width the more tapered the tooth the more pyramidal in the bony form the wider the embrasure more flattened the interdental bone will be alveolar crest is the tip of interdental bone where the inner and outer cortical plate meets the margin will be thin and knife edged uh, in vestibular surfaces of anterior and rounded posterior teeth most prominent border of interdental septum okay so this is the crest of alveolar uh, outer and uh, outer and inner cortical plates this is the crest of interdental septum in one way interradicular septum is the bone between the roots of multi rooted teeth so basal bone basal bone it is the osseous tissue of the mandible and maxilla except the alveolar process okay 
So alveolar process is up to the root and it is a osseous tissue that uh, mandible and maxilla without alveolar process. So part of mandible and maxilla without alveolar process is basal bone. So this is the alveolar bone. This is a basal bone. Okay. And anatomically, uh, we cannot say that uh, there is a distinct boundary that exists between maxilla, mandible, alveolar process and basal bone. This is just an arbitrary line. So we have uh, covered uh, our classification and um, the formation of bone, the process of alveolar bone formation and classification in detail and about composition. Now the second part of alveolar bone will be covering the histology that is various cells and matrix components. So I'll come up with the second part, the cells of um, alveolar bone, basically the histology. So alveolar bone part two, in this session we'll be dealing about cells and matrix component of alveolar bone. So we have basically two types of cell that is osteogenic and osteoclastic. Osteogenic as the name suggests it is creating cells and osteoclastic it is destroying cells. Osteogenic cells are osteoblast, osteocyte, bone lining cells and bone progenitor cell. Whereas the osteoclastic basically just the osteoclast. And in matrix component, we have inorganic and organic. In inorganic, we have calcium hydroxy apatite crystals. In organic, we have collagen matrix and non collagenous proteins. In non collagenous proteins, we have osteocalcin, osteopontin, and bone xyloprotein, osteonectin, proteoglycans, etc. So the commonly asked questions are osteoclast, osteoblast. So we'll start with osteoblast. So during embryonic development, the intramembranous bone of the maxilla and mandible initially forms from osteoblast arising from condensing mesenchyme in the facial region. So it is a most active secretory cells in bone. So it has basophilic uh, cuboidal elongated cells which is rich in synthetic and secretory organelles such as rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, granules, microtubules and it produces basically type 1 collagen and non-cancellous bone proteins like xyloprotein, osteopontin, osteonectin and also growth factors also it will produce which express and release alkaline phosphatase. So alkaline phosphatase is very much important in bone formation. Alkaline phosphatase. So alkaline phosphatase activity has been recognized as a reliable indicator of osteoblast function. And Osteocytes. So, I'll just give you a cycle of formation. This is osteoprogenitor cell, which is a very primitive one. Then osteoblast, later osteocyte, and finally osteoclast. So these three are osteogenic cell, but this is osteoclastic cell. So osteocyte is nothing but Uh, cells which is entrapped like uh, osteoblasts which is entrapped within bone are known as osteocytes. Okay, so the entrapped osteoblast. So osteoblast we learned. So the entrapped osteoblast is known as osteocyte. Okay, so if this osteoblast is entrapped within bone that is osteocyte which will be having canaliculi and uh, they occupy in uh, spaces known as lacunae in bone and are defined as cells surrounded by bone matrix. Now we have bone lining cells. Bone lining cells. 
uh, when bone surface are neither in the formative nor in the resorptive phase the surface is completely lined by a layer of flattened cell which is known as bone lining cell which is regarded as post proliferative osteoblast so, so these bone line lining cells are present when osteoblast and osteoclast activities are not there on the bone surface now the osteoprogenitor cell these are actually cells which produces osteoblast so they are fibroblast like cells with an elongated nucleus and few organelles whereas osteoclast we have learned this in detail uh, about osteoclast in our previous sessions so osteoclast originate from hematopoietic tissue fusion of mononuclear cells to form a multinucleated giant cell this is a multinucleated giant cell i have told you about this is a ruffled border and there will be a clear zone so it is very large it can have 5 to 50 uh, nuclei which is active on less than 1 percentage of bone surface it lie in how ships lacunae acidophilic cytoplasm and there will be ruffled border okay so there will be ruffled border facing the bone because hydrolytic enzymes are secreted and it has increased surface area so wherever this resorption happens the border will be in this shape ruffle border and multinuclear giant cell will be there and there will be a clear zone apart from it so that is osteoclast osteoclast is a commonly as short note osteoclast and osteoblast can be osteocyte and osteoprogenitor cell also can be a short note so osteoclast at the periphery of ruffle border the plasma membrane is smooth and closely opposed to bone surface and the adjacent cytoplasm is devoid of cell organelles which is uh, rich in actin and talin proteins associated with cell addition this region is known as clear zone okay so this is a ruffle border and this is a clear zone so clear zone is the adjacent cytoplasm which is not having any cell organelles so this clear zone creates an isolated micro environment in which resorption can take place so clear zone is also important so severe osteoclast excavating a large area of bone which is the leading edge of resorption is termed as cutting cone okay and released cytokines stimulate stem cells to differentiate into osteoblast so these osteoblasts secrete osteoid which is known as filling cone so cutting cone and filling cones are there cutting cone wherever this resorption happens is cutting cone and when the deposition happens that is filling cone so always bone formation is a continuous process resorption and deposition uh, will occur uh, in a bone that's how it is remodeled throughout the life so cutting corn is a osteoclastic activity creating a edge is resorbed and the other side when cytokines are released and there will be osteoid deposition which is known as filling corn so cutting corn and filling corn cutting corn filling cone so cutting cone there will be osteoclast activity and filling cone there will be osteoblast activity so that's about uh, osteoclast and osteoblast so two more things we need to learn is reversal line and resting line so these are important what is reversal line and what is resting line so this all can be asked as short note so reversal line or also known as cementing line so reversal line or cementing line which is a site of change from bone resorption to bone deposition is represented by a scalloped outline 
which is rich in sialoprotein and osteopontin so reversal line you can say it is corresponding with filling cone where the osteoblast are deposit the newborn osteoid so this is known as reversal line or cementing line that is the site of change from bone resorption to bone deposition so before it was bone resorbed area so new bones will be added so bone resorbed area will be like this ruffled border so when there is bone deposition it will be shallow instead of ruffled border so that is known as reversal line or cementing line so the change of bone resorption to bone deposition now what is resting line resting line is rhythmic deposition of bone with periods of relative inactivity seen as parallel vertical lines so there will be parallel vertical lines in bones when we take ground section of bone we can see parallel vertical lines so there will be rhythmic deposition of bone it will be added layer by layer but in between there will be a relative inactive phase which is seen as vertical parallel line that is known as resting line and reversal line is when deposition and uh, resorption uh, deposition happens the previously resorbed area gives a scalloped area which is known as reversal or cementing line so we have few age changes in bone just like uh, any heart tissue we have seen that in uh, cementum the age changes uh, and also we have seen in pdl also so any uh, tissue any living tissue will uh, go through the age changes so in bones it is uh, similar to like what is occurring in the skeletal system there will be osteoporosis with aging there will be decreased vascularity reduction and metabolic rate and healing capacity so bone resorption may be increased and more irregular periodontal surface will be seen and few uh, variations in normal bone are fenestration uh, dissens exostosis buttressing bone formation or it is also known as slipping so fenestration and dissens are removal of bone that is a uh, facial surface is more involved fenestration is isolated loss of bone and dissens is a complete loss of facial bone so it is anterior tooth are more involved and frequently bilateral sometimes due to malposition and root prominence or labial protrusion so etiology could be excessive occlusal force so this fenestration and dissens could be a short note so next thing is exostosis exostosis are outgrowth of bone of varied size and shape they can occur as small nodules large nodules uh, maybe sharp ridge or spike like projection or any combination of the above that is nodule small or large ridges or spike like projections and buttressing bone formation or lipping is nothing but uh, sometimes what happens is bone formation occurs in an attempt to buttress bony trabeculae which is weakened by resorption okay so when it occurs within the jaw which is termed as central buttressing bone formation and when it is on the external surface which is known as peripheral buttressing bone formation so this peripheral buttressing bone formation will cause bulging of the bone contour which is known as lipping okay so that is attempt to buttress a bony trabeculae which is weakened by resorption so that is bone buttressing so that is all about uh, normal variations and we have bone deformities horizontal and vertical so vertical will be an angular bone loss horizontal will be uh, evenly distributed mesio uh, mesio distal uh, direction
so we are not going much into those things so idea was to give a proper introduction about alveolar bone the types of alveolar bone its formation its composition and little bit about its variation bone deformities and age changes so we finished our periodontium that is gingiva periodontal ligament or the soft tissues and cementum and alveolar bone or the hard tissues so periodontium is nothing but which supports and surrounds the tooth so it gingiva periodontal ligament cementum alveolar bone are supporting structures of tooth so we have uh, many more topics coming up uh, we have to finish enamel dentin and pulp so i'll come up with these topics in my next sessions thank you